Joshua Tree National Park, 800,000 acres at the intersection of the Mojave and the Colorado deserts. With the average summer temperature reaching 104 degrees, it can be a hostile environment to all but the hardiest of creatures. According to legend, Mormon pioneers encountering the Joshua trees saw the branches as outstretched arms of Joshua, leading them to the promised land. But make no mistake, this is no paradise. In the 1800s, cattlemen came to this desert. They built dams to create water tanks. Soon, the miners would arrive in search of gold. They are all gone now, and only a few remnants, well preserved by the dry desert air, speak of their past glory. Now this desolate land is home to bighorn sheep, coyote, six species of rattlesnakes, and, as legend tells, the Joshua Beast. As early as 1963, researchers at the top-secret Nevada Biological Sciences Lab have been working on combining various strains of animal and human DNA for a government project known simply as the Chimera. This project was accelerated during the Cold War in hopes of creating a genetic super-being capable of great strength, intelligence, and endurance. But something went wrong. Recently recovered documents reveal a shocking story of a plan gone horribly awry and the escape of a creature unlike anything else we've seen. Is this creature still alive? The answer may well lie in the vast desert of Joshua Tree. We sent out a camera crew to follow the trail of evidence as we search for the Joshua Beast. Hi, welcome to Joshua Tree. A uh, couple of things to look out for. Don't pass the cactus, and if you're out after night, be very careful of the Joshua Beast. He was seen last night over by the Hidden Valley. You look closely on the ground, you see these unfamiliar tracks. We think they are the mythical Joshua beast, which we've heard about. Haven't seen any signs yet, other than these mysterious tracks leading off into the distance. Except uh, there's uh, the Joshua beast out here. Have you guys seen him? Well, we heard he was back over that way, and we went out looking for him, but you know, we didn't, we didn't find him. We heard some things off in the distance. Ever vigilant, we continued our pursuit for the elusive Joshua Beast. Our only hope was to travel in the relative safety of daytime, as most of the creatures in this remote desert wilderness are nocturnal. Tracks that we had followed would suddenly disappear, as if someone, or something, knew about our presence. Still, the evidence was growing. Take a look over here what Tracy and I spotted on our hike. This is uh, a Joshua tree that's obviously been clawed away by the Joshua Beast. I mean, it's got these massive scratch marks all the way up and down. I mean, it goes up to about seven or eight feet. So this guy's pretty tall. And uh, most of the tree has been completely scratched away. There's only a few pieces of bark left, probably sharpening those razor sharp claws that he has. And uh, just doing some massive, massive damage to this beautiful Joshua tree. As day quickly gave way to a moonless night, an uneasy rest came over us. We wondered, how close had we come to this creature? Or how close would he come to us? All right, what we have here is uh, wreckage from um, a campsite back in the 70s. And from what we heard back at the ranger station, uh, this area was a direct attack of the Joshua Beast. And we can see evidence of this attack. I mean, right over here was probably a little bit of a campsite uh, tent stand or so. They had the top of a stove. See over here, it was completely smashed in. And that, that looks like a giant print of some kind, even. And this was uh, the band off of a barrel, probably used for holding water. Later that evening, helicopters with thermal imaging cameras circled overhead, but came up empty-handed. We were once again on our own. This old footage might be the only known recorded sighting of the beast. Expert analysis has been inconclusive. Cross-referencing this footage with a trail map yielded some more tantalizing clues. We followed the trail to the west, deep into the heart of Joshua Tree. It led us to Black Rock Campground, where a grisly rumor of a late night abduction had everyone on edge. Jennifer, have you heard anything about the Joshua Beast being in this campsite? 
Yes, the Joshua Beast has been known to be over on this side of the park. Um, it's not something that we normally announce. Um, yeah, I can imagine. If you wouldn't. we did, I think there would be mass hysteria out there. Yeah, but there have been a few sightings, haven't there? There have been some sightings. I myself actually have seen the Joshua Beast. Have you? And let me tell you, it changes your life. Yeah, I can imagine. Now, what can you tell me about the diet of the Joshua Beast? Um, the Joshua Bee is really, he's an omnivore. Okay. He'll pretty much scavenge anything. Uh -huh. um, seeds, berries, leaves, twigs, right. um, the occasional, uh, I don't know, halfway decomposed carcass, oh boy. roadkill. Um, he'll go after small rodents, um, the occasional bird if he can catch it. Okay, and I've heard there was an, a missing or an abducted camper uh, last night. Can you comment on that? Um, I'm really not so um, um, it's an unfortunate story, really. Um, a camper out, um, he didn't have a flashlight. Mm. Um, the Joshua Beast definitely lurks in the shadows, um, doesn't come out in the light of day very often. Um, and as far as we can piece together, this camper, he was out on the edge of the campground, um, just kind of rustling around, and apparently the Joshua Beast came out, snatched him, and drug him away. We haven't found any sign of which direction, no tracks. Um, it's an ongoing investigation. We uh, believe that this is the Joshua Beast print. And right next to it, some more evidence of uh, what uh, the Joshua Beast has been snacking on, apparently. And um, from what we heard, uh, they tend to like, the, the Beast likes raisins and peanuts. You can even see this little chocolate chip over here. Probably taken from a hiker. Uh, the following morning, we ventured out to find the missing hiker, and perhaps another clue. Could the beast have claimed another life? Last night, in the campsite where we were staying, there was an abduction of a camper. And uh, we heard some noises in this area, so we decided to investigate during daylight. And I'm afraid what we have here is some of the scariest evidence to date. Now, i got to warn you, this is kind of graphic. So, um, what we have here on this rock... It looks to be evidence of uh, flesh. It's kind of leathery. It's a little piece of, and we're worried this, this might be the camper, the missing camper. The Joshua Beast came through here. He might have had a little bit of a snack and... Yeah, that's camper all right. With the sun rapidly falling, we hightailed it back to the safety of our distant camp. Our search had ended with as many questions as we started. The mysterious Joshua Beast remains as elusive and dangerous as ever. This is our laundry. Gwen and I uh, put it up, and uh, you know, hopefully it'll dry. It's kind of cold. It's in the 30s here, so it's really kind of chilly. So hopefully uh, they'll dry overnight. And it's attached to the thing. Joshua. What's that? Is that the Joshua? He's the orange. Get over here.